Welcome, my name is Riccardo Caivano and I'm going to present our research about defect-driven topology optimization, in particular the extension of the TopFAT algorithm to the commercially available software Hyperworks and its validation by means of a 3D component redesign for real industrial applications. Before starting, I would like to introduce my colleagues, Dr. Andrea Tridello from Politecnico di Torino, Giovanni Barletta, Nicola Gallo and Antonio Baroni from Leonardo Company, Professor Filippo Berto from Norwegian University of Science and Technology, and Professor David Paulino from Politecnico di Torino. The presentation will be divided in six main sections. In the first, I will introduce the topology optimization framework. In the second, I will briefly explain the key factors affecting the fatigue response of additive manufacturing products. In the third section, I will introduce the top fat algorithm aimed at including the defect population analysis within the topology optimization setup. In the fourth section, I will detail how to extend the top fat procedure to the commercially available software Hyperworks. In the fifth section, I will detail the defect driven topology optimization of a real industrial case from the aerospace sector. And lastly, conclusions and final remarks. Topology optimization can be defined in several ways. Here, I reported a very intuitive and practical explanation. Topology optimization is the procedure aimed at finding the best material distribution within a certain loaded domain, chasing an objective and under prescribed constraints. As for the material distribution, one of the most employed methods is the so-called density-based method. In this method, the domain is discretized infinite elements, and each element has its own relative density, called rho. The relative density is zero if the element can be considered as void material, whereas it is one if the element can be considered as full material. In the end of the optimization, the rho equal to one zones will define the final topology. As for the objectives, they can vary a lot. The most common are the mass minimization and the stiffness maximization. Likewise, the constraints can be both geometrical, such as overhanging limitation, or structural, such as a maximum von Mises stress. For example, looking at the image, the classical simple supported beam is optimized for stiffness maximization under a volume constraint. The topology optimization can find the optimal structure, even the global optimal structure, if the optimization process is well posed. Anyway, the final topology is optimal only under the prescribed constraints imposed at the beginning of the optimization. Just to have a visual example, let's look at the L-shaped beams he reported. In both the cases, the L-shaped domain is locked in the upper edge and loaded in the right upper corner. The stiffness has to be maximized under a value constraint and very classical topology optimization setup. Looking at the left topology, no stress constraint has been imposed and therefore the re-entrant corner is fully included in the final topology. The reason is that this maximizes the stiffness of the final structure, but in the point in the re-entrant corner, high stress peaks can appear and there is no control on them. On the contrary, the final topology on the right has been achieved including a von Mises stress limit. In this case, the topology is less stiff, but is structurally safe and, as a consequence, the topology optimization can be employed to safely design components. Topology optimization has been studied since 1980. However, the final geometries obtained with this method were almost always complex and very difficult to be realized through traditional and conventional manufacturing techniques. Recently, the advances of additive manufacturing processes allows to produce those geometries, even if convoluted and intricate. However, as discussed before, it is crucial to understand which are the key constraints to be included in the topology optimization setup, in order to safely design parts for the additive production. Looking at the life of the components, if the quasi-static regime is considered, a constraint on the von Mises stress may be sufficient. Instead, if the fatigue regime is considered, several questions must be answered to understand which constraints and fatigue model must be included. So, for example, how AEN parts respond in the fatigue regime, or what drives the fatigue response? The most important aspect to consider is the defect population, which affects the AM product's fatigue response. Indeed, AM parts are characterized by a non-negligible presence of process-induced defects, such as pores, cluster of pores, and lack of fusion. These defects cannot be eliminated, even if a perfect process parameter setup is employed. 
In this condition, classical fatigue theories may not be sufficient to predict the fatigue limit of the component. In particular, they may overestimate the real fatigue response of the part. The most suitable theory in this sense it is that of Murakami. His model can predict the maximum first principle stress, which can let nucleate and propagate a crack from the most critical defect. If that first principle stress threshold is not exceeded, then the part can be considered safe, even in presence of defects. With the aim of evaluating this limit, the defect population must be known. However, it can be accessed only after the part production with, for example, non-destructive techniques, when the design phase is already concluded. In order to access this defect population during the design phase, it has to be estimated statistically a priori. Murakami demonstrated that the defect population follows the largest extreme value distribution, LEVD. Equation 1 expresses the LEVD distribution. It states the probability P of finding a defect with dimensions square root of A, which represents an equivalent measure for the defect's area. As it can be seen, it is characterized by two main parameters, mu and sigma, which are the location and scale parameters of the distribution respectively. These parameters can be estimated experimentally looking at the defect population of several samples. Reversing equation 1, it is possible to foresee the largest defect area, square root of A, under a certain probability P, and this can be employed within equation 2. This equation expresses the link between the defect population, the stress ratio, the material parameters, and the maximum allowable alternate first principle stress, sigma f. This limit is the threshold which must not be exceeded in order to have a safe part in presence of defects. This limit, over the first principle alternate stress, can be included within the topology optimization formulation. In particular, here it is detailed the formulation of the top fat procedure. The formula can be quite easily understood looking at the different terms that compose it. Basically, the aim is to find the relative density of each element in the domain, that is the topology, which minimizes the global competence. Meanwhile, the equilibrium must be effective, and this is guaranteed by the finite element model. The final value must be a fraction of the initial one. The von Mises stress must not exceed the threshold sigma s, in other words, the quasi-static limit. The first principle alternate stress must not exceed the threshold sigma f, only where a traction load is applied, that is, the defect-driven fatigue limit by the previous equations. Lastly, the relative density must belong to the range 0, which means void material, and 1, full material. The top fat procedure has been solved in MATLAB, and actually it is a property code. However, even if this algorithm is well working, its applicability on industrial cases is limited. The possibility to extend the top fat procedure to commercial software would let industries and academics include the defect-driven constraint within the topology optimization to safely design AM parts. This extension brings many positive aspects, such as complex 3D meshes, assembly evaluation, straightforward post-processing, and much more without any coding procedures. The only required modification with respect to the previous topology optimization setup is that Hyperworks does not admit a constraint of the first principle alternate stress, whereas on the first principle maximum stress. For this reason, the more common limit is transformed into a limit of the first principle maximum stress, according to the highlighted equation. Given the previous methodology, it is possible to topologically optimize real components, including the defect population. Here, a bracket employed in aerospace sector is shown. Its function is to connect various equipment to the vehicle body. The two bigger grips, named NG lug and clevis, guarantee the connection to the equipment by bolts, whereas the other 12 smaller holes guarantee the riveting with the vehicle body. Internal analysis on the 
full assembly revealed that the equipment payload during the most severe acceleration of the vehicle can be resumed with six forces, both in intensity and direction, applied in the grip center. These values are employed in the topology optimization to set the quasi-static limit. As for the fatigue constraint related to, with the defect population, nominal values of these forces are used. These nominal conditions correspond to the average payload and acceleration the vehicle undergoes. The original component is realized in a high-performance aluminum alloy. Its additive manufacturing redesign is performed using the EBM technology on titanium alloy, without considering any particular post-treatment. The quasi-static limit can be assessed as a yield stress of 866 MPa, while the Murakami analysis leads to a defect-driven constraint over the first principal maximum stress of 450 MPa. Furthermore, the component requires to be redesigned with a 2% inferior mass compared to the original one, in order to reduce fuel consumption during flights and make this redesign substantial. In order to topologically optimize the component, it needs to be divided in two different zones. The node design domain, where the optimization won't take place, and the design domain, where the material distribution will be effectively optimized. The first zone, highlighted here in red, guarantees the coupling with the equipment, the vehicle and the connections. These zones will remain unchanged. The design domain, here in grey, is different from the original component. The reason is that the original component is already optimized for the current production, and many features are already present. In order to fully exploit the topological optimization, the design domain must be freed from these previous features, and it should be as great as possible to avoid geometrical unnecessary limitations. Overall, the design domain is extending to the wall thickness of the component, and the lightning are removed. Here, the final topology is reported. There are a few considerations to be carried out. First of all, a very thin bar is present, connecting the two load application zones. This connection, even if slim, is required by the solver, and furthermore, avoid a B-component separated solution. Without this bar, a connection would be included anyway. On the contrary, alignment problems may appear during the component allocation in the vehicle. Secondly, one riveting zone has been omitted by the solver in a final topology. In other words, this zone is not connected with the rest of the component, and it is not subjected to any stress. The reason is that this part is less important, and the solver decided to exclude it to put the mass in other most functional zones. However, this zone can be reconnected or eliminated manually by designers in a following phase. Here, the stress analysis, as provided by Algorogos, is reported. As it can be noticed, the von Mises equivalent stress is inferior to the imposed limit, that is, the yield stress, so the structure is statically safe. The first principal maximum stress is inferior to the imposed limit by the Murakami model, as expected. Overall, even if the most critical defect, that is, the largest, would appear in the most stressed area, any crack would propagate from it. In conclusion, the component is safe in the fatigue regime as well, considering the presence of process-induced defect. To conclude, topology optimization is a powerful tool for lighting structures and maximizing component performance, with possible outstanding positive effects on aviation, aerospace, racing, and many other industrial sectors. However, if the physical limits of the material are not included in the algorithm, the final component may fail under the imposed loads. Additive manufacturing techniques are suitable for producing topologically optimized parts, however, they suffer from process-induced defect presence. It is crucial to understand that these defects drive and lower the fatigue response of the part, and they must be included in a topology optimization setup. This can be done including the defect presence according to the Murakami model as a constraint on the first principal maximum stress, as done in TopFET. The commercially available software Hyperworks is able to effectively exploit the TopFET method and extend it to real industrial complex cases. The present case study guarantees the extendability of the top FAT procedure to add commercially available software, unlocking the possibility to safely optimize components under defect-driven constraints without the need of dedicated code. Thank you very much for your attention.